Reports. Andy, first of all, want to ask, has your team in Syria been able to distribute any aid to people since the ceasefire began? Not so far. I mean, the ceasefire is very, very welcome news. It's great that there's finally some traction in this terrible crisis and that there is at last some form of ceasefire and some sense of hope. But thus far, the ceasefire conditions haven't changed what we've been able to do on the ground. There isn't yet a really solid sense of, of, uh, of ceasefire, of peace and of safety for humanitarian movement. How do you make that determination then, when it is, in your opinion, safe to go in? Well, we don't make it alone. All of the agencies working in Syria are all monitoring the situation to figure out when it will be safe to move. We're dependent on, uh, on the forces on the ground, on the government of Syria giving permissions, and indeed on the other armed actors agreeing uh, that we can move and we can get convoys in. So there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of desire to get goods in there to people in need. But for now, we have to wait and see uh, and, and wait for those conditions to be right for delivery. Now, I gather, unlike some of the other aid organizations, yours uh, has a base in Damascus. You already have supplies you're waiting to distribute. So you're not waiting for trucks to be able to cross the border, for example. Uh, give us a sense of what kind of aid you have and where you're hoping to take it. So aid into Aleppo, which is obviously the focus of this ceasefire at the moment, can come across the border from Turkey, and that aid will go into the opposition-held East Aleppo, or it could come up from Damascus, from government-held parts of the country, probably into West Aleppo. Now, Oxfam is registered in Damascus, and so our work is from Damascus into other parts of the country. And, and we have a long history of work now across parts of Syria, mostly to do with water supply. So what we're hoping to do is to get more hygiene kits, as we would call them, family kits of soaps and, and basic household hygiene items up into Aleppo. They're on a convoy waiting in Damascus. We're also hoping to get access so that we can repair and get back into action some of the water infrastructure that we've built in Aleppo, things like uh, toilet and shower blocks, water purification plants, and so on. I know that you manage to travel to Damascus every couple of months or so. Uh, I don't know how recently you've been there, but wonder what you're anticipating you'll find once you are able to get aid into those areas you describe. Well, I'm, I'm not able to get much beyond Damascus, unfortunately. And Damascus is, is a strange... Uh, a bubble of, of apparently normal life, and yet so very close to some terrible front lines and conflict areas. Um, up in Aleppo, we, we've seen such appalling destruction and suffering, and so this aid is obviously really, really urgent, and we all need to do everything we can to ensure it gets through. Clearly, the pressure at the moment is on the Russians and the Americans to persuade their counterparts who are amongst the fighting groups to, to give up the, the fight for now, to adhere to the ceasefire and to let this aid through. I can't imagine how um, emotionally frustrating it must be for your team there on the ground and for you to have supplies ready to go, to see the devastation and know it's out there and yet be stuck waiting. Uh, what are you hearing from your team there in terms of how optimistic they are that this ceasefire will in fact maintain its hold? Well, this isn't the first time we've been down this road. There's been many attempts to, to have ceasefires and to bring about peace, and each one of them has foundered in turn. So there's some quite cautious optimism. We desperately want this ceasefire to work, but we know that the, there's a lot of risks. There's a lot of things that could still get in its way. The, there's the fact that, of course, some groups will not sign up to the ceasefire. ISIS and al-Nusra have been excluded from the ceasefire, and so they still have the, uh, the opportunity to interfere and to, and to restart conflict. So there's lots to play for here. It's, it's a question of waiting, and I hope in the next 24 hours we'll start to see some real movement of aid to people who really need it. Final thought from you, Andy, before we let you go, uh, with given your unique perspective on what's happening there, if there was what, one thing that you w uh, think the rest of us need to understand about the conflict and the challenges there, what is that message you would want to get out? I think that, that it's such a complicated conflict 
but there are so many different fighting parties with so many different perspectives. And so it's remarkably complicated to get agreements and to get aid through to people who need it. You know, the sense that we have is that people in such desperate need, of course, we must do everything we can to reach them. But the level of complexity and the level of politics involved in this is intense and it really is obstructing that aid. Andy Baker, we wish you and your team all the best with this important work. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Andy Baker is the regional program manager for Oxfam's Syria crisis response, joining us in Amman, Jordan.